Hello and welcome back to another installment of the monthly pickups where of course as always I'm filming this on the 1st of uh, September and I have a few things um, to, to show off uh, if I can get them all into frame there. So yeah, um, not long after wrapping up the the previous uh, installment of the monthly pickups, I went into CEX and I saw this there for the Euro 50. And I was like, okay, that's definitely coming home with me. And um, that is the complete season one and season two of the Catherine Tate Show. Now, I've never seen every episode of this show. Um, I'd only seen bits and pieces of it, obviously. Like, I, I remember the that one Christmas special with David Tennant. Like, I rem that that was fun that ha which i think was like 2008 2009 one of those two um so yeah uh i've been thinking about you know trying to see if i could get some of these seasons um for the collection and i just got lucky and saw that someone had recently traded this in so i was like yeah sure i'll i'll add that into the collection um on top of that i did buy a new manga book that I got in a charity shop. I don't know much about it, but I am like, uh, I don't know. Uh, let me, let me try and figure out how many pages deep I'm, I'm in here. Uh, do, do, do. 44 pages deep into, uh, this already. And that is Reign of the Seven Spellblades. Um, so that's just my makeshift bookmark there. Um, so it was a Euro 50. I know next to nothing about this. I did watch the trailer for the anime that got released for it last year. And it looked pretty cool. So I just need to get around to actually continuing with this at some point. So now we get on to this week. You know, the end of August. Uh, since, you know, the, the first was on a Sunday. Uh, this is basically what I got. So... Went into um, a into Saint Vincent de Paul, one of the Saint Vincent de Paul shops, and they had this Pokemon structure deck uh, or themed deck from back in like the early early days of the game, you know, for the Pokemon TCG, and they wanted sixty five for it. So, like it like it's why I very you'll very rarely hear me say that I got something in this particular store. They have three in Navin, uh, where I live. Um, so this one is literally just, as soon as I get off the bus, it's right there. Um, so I went in, saw that it was 65. They had some DS games that they wanted eight euro a piece for some Professor Layton games. And I didn't know if that, if I was gonna get like more than eight euro for trading. Um, so I didn't, cause I didn't have credit at that time. So uh, I didn't have internet to, you know, scan uh, on the CEX app to see. Uh, so I left them there. Besides, eight euro for, for a DS game in a charity shop, eight euro for any video game in a charity shop or DVD or Blu-ray, I will more than likely leave behind. Um, so the only thing that I got was this nifty little uh, train here. Um, it's a micro machine. And according to the copyright date, it says 1978, but I'm not too sure if this is literally from 1978 or it's just, that's just when the license was created, you know, the copyright was created for this. Um, but it's a nice little train, you know, trains were one of my early special interests when I was a kid, uh, mainly centered around Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, but... It's, trains have always been something that I know I need to read up more on because I love steam engines. Steam engines are my favorite types of trains um, because they just look cool compared to, you know, the modern garbage diesel and bullet trains and all that. Some bullet trains do look good, don't get me wrong, but nothing compares to steam engines, you know, um, just the look of them, you know. Uh, so this was just a Euro and I, I'll have it. For the, for the collection, because, you know, I would love to get into collecting model trains. I just don't have that type of money uh, or the space, you know, to set up one of those uh, model train dioramas. 
Um, so yeah, then I went into um, Oxfam, and the only thing that I got in there was a CD. Because I do sometimes collect CDs. Um, if it's from a band that I like and it has certain songs on it, I will usually pick it up. So for two euro, I picked up Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory. You know, um, has a lot of my favorite uh, songs from them on there. Um, like Crawling, uh, In The End, just to name a few. Um, so yeah, I for two euro, I will add it into uh, my album collections. Um, it's very rarely that I do actually add albums in. Um, so the next thing that I'd done was I went into CEX. Uh, actually, no, after I got the Hyper Theory, I went into this Asian store uh, that, you know, sells like Asian foods and stuff. They have drinks, but they also have like, you know, Japanese style type of stuff for like anime inspired stuff that I've gotten before. Like you can, you can see uh, where my finger is pointing that shiny thing, uh, shiny silvery thing above the, the TV. That's something that I got from there was like a, uh, it was a chewing gum packet that came with a collectible Dragon Ball super card. Um, and then I spotted something that was like, oh, I remember getting stuff like this from, from the old gotcha machines, you know, put the coin in, you, you spin it and then out pops a little ball. And that's how I, like, when I was growing up, I got a whole bunch of, like, Pokemon toys um, and stuff. And I seen this. I seen multiple versions of this. So this is a Master Ball from Pokemon, for, for those who don't know. And I was like, it was 420, and it does come with a toy. So the, obviously the cap goes off. And the Pokemon that I got is one of the newer ones, uh, which is uh, the, one of the new legendaries. Um... Tropagos. Uh, so yeah, there's a little, little itty bitty uh, Tropagos. Not sure how well this is. You can see it. Uh, probably a little bit blurred. I, I tried my best. But yeah, um, we'll definitely be getting more of those. Uh, more of these, you know, because there's a there's good few of them. And a lot of them I do actually want to, to get. So this was, you know, cool little display piece. You know, another Pokeball and another little Pokemon to go for the display. So then I went into uh, CEX, and the only Blu-ray that I bought was uh, the 20th anniversary of Jumanji uh, for a tenor with a uh, slip cover. So I remember seeing this. I don't think I've ever seen it in full, though. Um, so yeah, and you know, 10 euro, I, I, it's not bad, not bad. And then the last thing that I have to show off for right now is another CD. And that is for Green Day's American Idiot. I picked this up at another charter shop for a euro. Uh, there was going to be another album that I was going to get, which was um, a Fall Out Boy album. Uh, but unfortunately, it was missing the disc. So I left it behind. And that is what I have for right now. Um, if I can just, you know, show them off again, that this is... This is everything that I that I got so far. So as I said last time, let's see what else I get for the rest of this month. Okay, so it's literally the next day, and I has a stack of DVDs. Um, yeah. So, uh, locals happen. You know, I, I think I mentioned it where I do Yu-Gi-Oh locals up in this place called Reroll Games, and I had to walk into town this this week. Um. And I didn't expect, I went into, into CEX for just a brief second, see who was there, you know, uh, from my friends. And then I immediately spotted this. I was like, yep, yeah, that's coming home with me. I saw the price. I was like, yeah, that's definitely coming home with me because I can easily swap in my, uh, swap it for my Blu-ray. And so I have the Terminator 2 Ultimate DVD Steel Tin Edition. So, yeah. I mean, there's not really much, you know, there's this, the debossing and stuff. Um, opening it up um, reveals the DVD version uh, for for it. Um, we also have this uh, film club postcard. And then we have another back uh, for the yoke. This was actually a year, should have been a euro. But because they saw Terminator 2, they probably just typed in Terminator 2 and went for the standard edition. 
not the ultimate edition. So technically I should have gone for a year or cheaper, but water under the bridge. So yeah, here it is. There's the back, so it's like that. So I guess that's why they include uh, this. So uh, to change it if you want. And uh, yeah, so it is two discs. Uh, there's disc one and disc two. Um, I'm not sure like what special features are on here. It comes with a thick ass book. Like, um, yeah, so the ultimate guide. Uh, so we have obviously the T-1000 there. We have Sarah Connor. Uh, so it goes, so there's that page. Um, so I think it's just like going through, yeah, the like the background of the film. Uh, yeah, because we have like concept art for the T-1000 there. Um, then we have uh, Arnie there. Then another one of Arnie. I'm just going to quickly go run through this. Um, see if there's anything else. Yeah, so it's just basically going over. Then it covers what's on disc one which I hope you can read. Um, then it goes into for chapters and then we have what's on disc two. Um, disc two continued and then like chapters and restoration notes. And that's that. So yeah, uh, like I said, I will end up putting my Blu-ray in here more than likely. So let me pause whilst I go grab that. Okay, so here's my standard Amore for uh, Terminator 2. Fits in like a glove. Like there's obviously gonna be like a bit of rattling, but I don't care. Like th this was the main reason why I bought it, you know, was to have this as the, you know, cause I have done something similar and I just ripped a bit of the sticker that was there for uh, talking about it and I just now I'm kind of sad because it goes over like some of the content that was on it um but oh well uh let me pause once I go delete some f stuff off my phone okay now I shouldn't have storage problems so yeah um so while I was at locals I got talking to the owner and I mentioned you know that I collect physical media and he brought up you know oh what do you go for and I said well, usually anything that tickles my fancy so he brought out a big crate of uh, DVDs and when I go next week he'll probably have more for me to look through. So I got all of these um, for a tenor including a steelbook, a DVD steelbook. So we'll start off with the two box sets because it's from a TV show but it's not complete um, and that is Farscape season three episodes um, let's see uh, we have episodes nine ten sorry uh, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, uh, thirteen and fourteen. Um, uh, from season three. So it's I know Farscape is a show that I will end up liking that I just need to get around to. I just have so much on my backlog. Like we, like it's something that I mentioned, but it's like massive how big my backlog is. So these next ones were basically just recommendations. Um, so I've heard that Leon is a fantastic film. I have never seen it before. Um, and yeah, I, like I said, I just, I'm just, I've got these off of basically recommendations. Um, so next is, uh, Night Watch as a DVD steel book. Um, like I said, I know next to nothing about this, but it is basically just, um, what Tony had recommended to me. So two discs. Uh, next was the, the, this was the first thing that he recommended to me. And it's a film by M. Night Shyamalan and it's Lady in the Water. And the way he was gushing about this film is what made me want to give it a shot. Now also, you know, back when some DVDs were like 25 cent um, that you could get uh, in CEX. So it still has a little slip. Um, and there's the inside, it has a little thank you. You're doing the right thing by buying this genuine DVD. So talking about piracy. So that's interesting. Um, 
as an add-on. So, and then the last one is a animated film, a 10th anniversary special edition on Ninja Scroll. I got it because it's an anime and I know next to nothing, I'm going to actually have to, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to censor real quick one of the photos that's on the back because you it's all out there like um the yiddies is out there um so yeah that's uh that's that and that is everything that i got uh so yeah we'll we'll see what else i get for the rest of this month okay so it's now wednesday and i was sent uh something from a fellow youtuber uh, that being the trash picture show so i already did a video on that where i opened up everything and so I'm just going to quickly f go through what I was sent. Um, the only thing that I won't be showing off is the Doctor Who Battles and Time cards that I was kindly sent as well. Because I literally just finished sorting them out into, into my big ass binder, you know, full of Battles and Time stuff. So, yeah. Um, so I knew I was getting something uh, from him. I just did not expect everything that I got because there everything is just like blew my fucking mind. Like the Doctor Who Battles in Time stuff, that blew my mind because a lot of the cards that he had sent, all of them actually, I never had right here. But I'm ninety nine point nine percent certain when I was you know start collecting them when I was a kid, which sadly I don't have my original collection. Um, I'm ninety nine point nine 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 percent sure, sure, sure that. He, I had those cards that he had gifted um, so on top of that um, he kindly sent me 28 episodes or volume 2 of Batman the Animated Series so this is something that I definitely grew up watching reruns of the same with um, what was it Brave and the Bold and uh, Beyond those were, these were the Batman cartoons that I grew up on so it is four four discs and as you can see here here is the letter that he uh sent with it so that is of course going to remain in the dvd um so i got some cool other stuff so um according to the note uh this is a uh his friend uh comic pinup uh or yeah i think it's pinup of this called yes pigeon and honestly it it, it screams me like th this is the type of humor that i like um you know just did the carnage of of these types of things so this is will definitely be going up uh on my wall um at some point uh probably after this video uh, gets posted. So not only did I receive the Batman animated um, DVD, I got some Batman Return baseball cards, you know, um, and they're honestly in, in, I would say, near mint to excellent condition. Um, so some, some corner dings making them, I'd say, excellent. So the cards that I have is um, Miles Away, we have Kindle uh, Kindai Express. So that was number 70. We have 73. So we have Crashing the Party, which is number 66. We then have Meow uh, Catwoman, which is number 42. Then we have Cemetery Pilgrimage, which is number 37. Uh, we have the list of Oswald Cobblerport, which is number 36. And then lastly, we have the Dark Knight Triumphant as card number 77. So, yeah, ver never had these before, you know, and I've always seen people opening these, you know, baseball style cards for some of these um, uh, movies you know back back in the day when they used to do something like that like I remember collecting sticker books for like the Harry Potter movies um, but that that would be about it so he also included a Doctor Who poster and it's for Asylum of the Daleks I'm pretty sure this was put out before series 7 came back and I absolutely 
Love it. So this will of course go right up onto my wall. I just need to figure out where exactly I'm going to be putting it. Um, and then lastly, uh, in the care package that he sent me, was the Star Trek The Collector's Edition, part 49. Which, this is the magazine you used to get back in the day to get, before they put out box sets and stuff, they would give you three episodes. I have the uh, the original series version of this. Uh, I have all 40 or 28 DVDs of it. Um, and so this is the next generation version of this. And the episodes you would have gotten is Power Play, Ethics, and The Outcasts. And so the contents of this magazine is Death in Klingon Society, Pattern Enhancers, The Janani, uh, Dr. Toby Russell, we have Genet, uh, Gen Genetronic Replicator, uh, we have Mabu 6, Moon, uh, we have uh, information about the Daedalus class, the USS Essex NCC-173, the first Starfleet vessel to explore the moon of uh, Mabu 6, and fell prey to its uh, non-corporeal inhabitants. We have uh, stuff on Sorin, and then we also have behind the scenes uh, with Michael Dorn. Um, so it's uh, saying here, Michael Dorn appeared in seven seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation and four of Star Trek Deep Space Nine and five Star Trek movies. We talked to him about his roles as Lieutenant Worf, the galaxy's favorite Klingon warrior. So it's an interview. And then, you know, skipping through to the Daedalus page, and this is definitely something I'm gonna to have to take out um, and stick on my wall because it's just so cool not to. So, here's the spread of the Daedalus class. Uh, USS Essex, uh, NCC-176, and then be behind it is the reason why I want to stick it up. We have the uh, blueprints for the ship, which looks absolutely amazing. And I'm going to try and take this out without ruining the rest of the magazine because I definitely do want to have this up on my wall somewhere. So... Uh, let's see, what's the best way to do this? I will pause, actually, whilst I try to do this, because this video is already long as is. Okay, I successfully managed to take it out of the magazine without doing any sort of damage to it. And I'm not sure which site now I want to do. Do I want to do the 3D render of the Dataless class, or do I want to do this i probably will go for the um the blueprint because the blueprint just looks so much cooler and that was that's all he had sent to me um so then of course i went into town today and found fuck all i went into um saint vincent de paul left empty-handed went into oxfam left empty-handed went into cex left empty-handed the only thing that i bought was another one of these pokeball toys that i got um, already, and I managed to get a little Frigibax from the newest Pokemon game, Scarlet and Violet, which is cool because I really love this guy. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I have for right now. This video is already like fucking twenty minutes long, and we're only at the start of the fucking month. Jesus Christ! Um, I might have to edit some of this stuff down. But anyway, let's see what else I get for the rest of this month. Okay, so we are now on the eleventh of September, and I only have. Two things to show off, one Blu-ray plus one DVD, and also another little Pokemon uh, toy thing. So on Sunday, as you might know, uh, I have done community posts about it, but I do have another YouTube channel uh, dedicated to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, card game. So every Sunday I go to my local card shop to play. and. So I was meeting up with friends and we went into this Asian store. It's the same place that I've gotten, you know, the Pokeballs that you can see behind me there. And they have, you know, something different to the Pokeballs, um, which is this little thing. So it has a magnet on top so you, and then it can also spin. Uh, so it's kind of like a little game like that. Um, 
So that's Oshawott. So it was cheaper than the actual Pokeball stuff. Um, so now we get on to Monday because uh, my friend had stayed the night um, from, from doing locals. And so uh, we went then into town. And uh, whilst we were, I went into, we both went into CEX, I had noticed this in the bin. And as soon as I noticed what it was, I was like, I want that. Can I please have that? And um, because I know that all, everyone that works there, they're like, sure, here you go. Because they, they were just going to bin it anyway. And that was the slipcover for Star Trek, the next generation, best of both worlds on Blu-ray. So there we see Locutus there. And then here's the back. So I went in today and I actually bought the Blu-ray itself to go with it, you know. So yes, it was 15 euro, more than I would have liked to have paid for it, but I wanted to complete, you know, the slipcover for it. And whilst, yes, I do have the complete next generation on DVD, um, it's not bad just to have, you know, this, because I do like the slipcover. That's, that's the main reason why I bought it, because I wanted to keep the, the slip with the actual uh blu-ray itself so it's uh as you can see it's different on the front but the same on the back so and that was initially all i had planned to get but as i was looking through the dvds that had just recently betrayed traded in i noticed a movie that i would have liked to have gotten but i wasn't paying 18 euro for a dvd and that was for the original Time Machine movie, you know, back from the 60s, not the remake that they done. Because I've seen bits and pieces of that, and it's a great film. And it's a film I def definitely want to re-watch at some point and also get in the collection. But I'm not sure if it does have a Blu-ray. If it does, that's also probably, like, really expensive. So I won't be paying 18 euro for a Blu-ray unless I have a voucher to put towards that. But one thing I did see um, is this terrible... B movie that my cousin had shown me that I loved and I'd only seen once and so it's a Titan DVD release of The Return of the Living Dead with um yeah so from music featuring music from The Damned, uh, The Cramps and others. So yes I have watched this uh, once with um with my cousin as I said as I drop it there and it is absolutely god awful. Like, I, I I call this a B horror movie. I think it's actually more accurate to say it's a D list ho horror movie. You know, but because but regardless, it's so bad it's good. You know, I I definitely had a lot of fun watching it. The visual effects on it are superb. You know, it's all practical. Um, you know, as well, well, it's not all practical. There's a lot of practical aspects to it. And there is a lot of, you know, uh, digital special effects and stuff. But regardless, the effects themselves are absolutely amazing. Um, so obviously I'm going to be actually decided that I'm going to review this in a few weeks time and uh, for October. So yes, uh, that's all I have for right now. So let's see what else we get for the rest of the month. Okay, so three more Blu-rays to show off. Um, Cost me twenty three fifty for the lot. Um, Cause I wasn't expecting really to go into town today. Uh, just maybe do go do my food shop and come home. But because of circumstances, I had to go into town. And so this morning when I woke up and couldn't get back to sleep for a while, uh, I did check my the CEX app to see what Blu-rays they have. Cause I mainly just check see what Blu-rays they have. For TV shows um, and other stuff that I might pick up, I'll just go in blind for that. So um, I, I didn't fully expect to, to actually pick up anything because, again, I've been going in and there's just been bubkiss for me. But we have three here. Um, they've, all, they've all actually been ones that I've been, you know, searching for. Um, so, again, going in alphabetical order here, we have Be Kind Rewind, which has flown under the radar for a lot of people. Um, basically, it's, you know, a film where Jack Black um, act, try, while trying to sabotage a power plant, accidentally erases uh, VHS tapes uh, for this, like, VHS store. So himself and um, Moss Def 
uh, the the actor playing Mike, um, remake one of the films, and because it's so well done, they start to film others as well. So I, how I discovered this was was randomly because um, uh, there there's a shop near me, you know, uh, called Centra. It's one of those places you go for, like convenience store type of thing. And at one point, growing up, they actually did do movie rentals um, for for some bizarre reason. Like, this is, like, super early on when I moved in here, uh, into this house. They'd done that. And that was one that I had uh, rented and watched. Um, and I loved, but I haven't seen it in over 20 years. So, the next film is a film I watched for the very first time last year. Um, and I was floored by it, by how amazing um, the, the film was. And I'm so happy to say, so happy to actually own it on Blu-ray because I did have it on DVD and now I've upgraded it to Blu-ray. And that film is The Pianist. Honest to God, probably one of my favorite World War II films. Um, and just one of my favorite movies in general that I discovered last year. Because, like, with, within the first half hour of this movie, and I paused it when I watched it, because I was so close to tears in the first half hour of this film. Um, and, you know, Adrian Brody, who, um, who plays the main character, fucking phenomenal. Like, this was the first film I think I've seen of his. I'd, of course, seen clips of him, you know, and then, of course, later on, I went to watch Predators, which is another film that I loved. Uh, that he was a part of but i fucking love this film to the point where by time i had finished this film um i was speechless left speechless for the guts of an hour that's how how impactful this film was for me um so i know it's like 15 euro uh, but as I knew as soon as I seen that they had it there, it was like, I am not leaving without this Blu-ray. Because I love this movie, and I really wanted to have it again on Blu-ray. I'm happy to say, now I do. And then the last film that I bought um, was another film that I watched for the very first time last year, I want to say. Um, yeah, it was Christmas Eve of last year that I watched it with my aunt. And that is uh, The Greatest Showman. Um, funny enough, whilst I was out uh, looking in charity shops, I did find the, the soundtrack to this movie. Um, you know, <gasps> excuse the hiccup there. Um, I found it in a charity shop. I left it behind because I was going to pick this up anyway. And I don't really, like, I like some of the songs, but not enough to to go out of my way and, you know, listen to them on my own accord. But that is what I have for right now. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if I'm going to continue on, um, you know, if there's another week left for me uh, or I will, uh, we'll, we'll find out. I'll see what I, I'll see what I can pick up on Friday and I'll decide then if I'm going to continue on for another week or leave things uh, as is. So you'll know obviously by the length of the video. Hello, okay, so this is this is gonna wrap things up now. I have three more things, one of which I just flashed you there. Um, so yeah, um, recording this the Wednesday before this gets posted. So I went into town today. Um, finally, I was actually able to go into town today because I've been having some issues with my uh, around my feet where uh, that's prevented me from leaving the house all weekend um but i did go to the doctor for that and that's a whole different thing that i'm not going to mention so um yeah only three things two things from a charity shop one uh from cex so let's break it down so obviously the first thing i showed you off was x-men related and it is seasons four and five of the 90s X-Men uh, series. So, and now I know that the only other one that I'm missing to have a complete set, I believe, is series three, volume two. Um, Cause I have series one, volumes one and two, series two, volumes one and two. So I'm not sure if there's any other volumes to series one and series two, um, but 
at least this has, you know, series, uh, series four volumes one and two and series five volumes one and two. Uh, so this was actually originally factory sealed. Uh, obviously I opened it up because I wanted to. Um, so yeah, taking off the slip here, it comes like this. And the only issue I have with it is all the discs um, are on this one thing. Uh, and it, it's annoying because if I'm trying to take it out, I, I'm bending the disc in a way to try to get it out. So that's, so I'm always afraid that I'm gonna break it. So that's, this is series four, volume one. This is series four, volume two. And then uh, uh, series five, volume one, and series five, volume two. And then of course, after this, you know, we now have X-Men 97. So let me just make sure I'm putting these back in the right order. So yeah, um, so this was a fiver, because uh, usually in Oxfam, they, they charge a fiver for box sets now. Um, so I picked up another Scooby-Doo that I remember watching as a kid on VHS. Uh, so I picked up the DVD version and that is Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. So yeah, this is another one that I loved as a kid and, uh, just don't have it in my collection. So it was two euro. I picked it up. Um, so I actually didn't check the condition of it on the disc yeah it's perfectly fine there there's an I don't know why I'm showing you you can't really fucking see um but yeah that's another Scooby-Doo classic that I grew up on added into my collection because I, I I know for like Scooby-Doo stuff I'm only collecting what I watched growing up you know and so the last thing I picked up was in CEX I paid eight euro for it I had to make sure that uh it did not have a blu-ray release um and i looked on ebay amazon and blu-ray.com the first the first two movies in this franchise definitely have blu-rays uh the first one i could probably get over here the second one is probably a us exclusive so i'm not entirely too sure but it's the third in the lilo and stitch films and that is stitch the movie you know, with uh, Cousin uh, Sparky, which then leads into the Lilo and Stitch cartoon series that they've done. Um, and then, so, uh, then, no, hang on. Yeah, yeah, then there, I think there's another film after this where it all gets wrapped up, you know, wraps up the, um, the cartoon as well. So I'm not, so, I don't know. It's, it's one I've been having my eye on because I wasn't sure if it had a Blu-ray or not. So I'm happy to add it into the collection. And that is going to wrap up September's monthly pickups video. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I shall see you all. I know actually what's coming next. I'll see you all on Monday for my Star Trek The Next Generation Best of Both Worlds Parts 1 and 2 review. I'll catch you all for that one on Monday.